A bill to eliminate all state protections for Indiana's wetlands is making its way through the Indiana Senate. Wetlands act as sponges that trap and slowly release water, purifying it. They help control flooding and are home to lots of Indiana's wildlife and native vegetation. Farmers, home builders, and land developers say Senate Bill 389 is necessary to reduce confusing regulations and alleviate the state's housing crisis. Senate Bill 389 would align Indiana's law with current federal law and no longer regulate certain defined isolated wetlands and ephemeral streams, thus potentially reducing the overall cost of development due to costly mitigation of these isolated wetlands. The bill was authored by three state senators that have direct ties to the home building industry. Indiana has already lost 85% of its wetlands over the years, and the move would most likely lead to the destruction of the remaining 15% not protected by the federal government. The bill would help developers and farmers profit, but history shows that removing Indiana wetlands leads to short-term gains and long-term problems. This is an area of wetland known as the Grand Kankakee Marsh, a vast wetland that existed in Indiana along the Kankakee River from St. Joseph County all the way to the Illinois border. In 1852, the state enacted a law that called for state swamplands to be sold, drained, and reclaimed. Land developers and farmers began buying up marshland once thought worthless except for hunting and fishing. A report in the Marshall County Republican newspaper on April 11, 1861 saw it this way. Its consummation would bring into cultivation in a few years a district of country larger and richer in soil than Marion County. No stream in the United States of similar length has as much inexhaustible rich bottomland. That soil is now practicably worthless and may be made the most productive in the state. Hoosiers wanted more of the land reclaimed for their own purposes while still enjoying the more obvious fruits of the still wild wetlands. The Standard Oil Company found oil in Stark County and established wells throughout the Kankakee Valley. Destroying the wetland was good for business, but it started to have unexpected side effects. Rains flooded areas prone to flooding for decades, if not centuries, and the farmers in new lands were caught in the middle. As development in the area continued, more Hoosiers began to feel the effects of the diminished wetlands. Wildlife that usually came to the marsh, like ducks, began avoiding the state. The situation got so bad, the state's conservation department started introducing Kansas jackrabbits into the Kankakee Marsh, basically just to see what would happen. In 1934, 10 years after the drainage completion, people began asking for a change. Efforts began to restore the Kankakee Marsh. The federal government invested millions to plan the restoration. Billions more dollars have been spent to recover from flooding in the Kankakee River Basin made worse by the diminished wetland. Because of climate change, 5.6 inches more rain falls in the state every year in shorter events, increasing the flood risk. The bill in the Indiana Senate right now in 2021 would eliminate state protections for all of the state's wetlands, meaning what happened to the Kankakee River Marsh could happen to the rest of the state. Item is opposed to this bill taking away the state's ability to protect our wetlands. The repealing of state isolated wetland law would undermine years of work in flood prevention and water quality efforts. 